Welcome to our channel. My name is Talissa and this is my partner Jonathan. We are professional ballroom dancers and we have been sharing quite a few dance tutorials on how to improve your ballroom dancing. Today we're going to be talking about the throwaway oversway. It is an exceptionally beautiful step and one of those line figures that everybody wants to dance once they know the basics. Yeah, well, even sometimes when they don't know the basics, it's a very popular step. So we're going to run you through a few of the ideas that we think are very, very important. Probably the most important. Um, For me, the throwaway oversway is very much made beautiful by the timing and the coordination of the step. Uh, so there's a couple of aspects that make that happen. That's what we're going to focus on today. Yeah, so I think the first, the first idea that we'd like to discuss is really about um, breaking down the misconception that the throwaway over sway is just one shape. Um, I think that for us, it's definitely three shapes. There is a shape that we must uh, show before the throwaway over sway. As we're entering it. As we're entering. Then we have the main beautiful line that we all know and recognize leg lines yep and then there is the concluding shape and i think that the throw over sway if done beautifully should have all three lines and all three shapes so i think that's the first thing we're going to demonstrate so we'll i think do you want to show a bad one first sure we'll show you a bad one first <laughs> So this one has no consideration for those three shapes. I don't know how well I executed that badly. I don't know. Yeah, so what you should see... <laughs> what, what I don't know whether we should even post that. Yeah, we may not post that. Um, what you should have seen, hopefully, is that we haven't really sold the shape very well. That this is a shape that you want to uh, show everyone that it's coming and that, and, and that it's going to be beautiful and you want to be able to milk it. So here, we didn't really milk anything. It was kind of in and out. Um, not the best version. So we'll try to show you a better version now. Here's the first shape. Here, second shape. And finishing with the third shape. Now there's always some uh, stylistic choices that you can make in those, but the clarity for us is really in the space that we have between each other and the amount of turn and rotation we're doing as a couple. If you haven't watched our video on turn and rotation, that one will really, really help you when we're talking about this throwaway over so. So essentially when I am trying to complement Jonathan's shape and position within these, these three entry, middle and exit positions of the throwaway over sway, I'm really monitoring a few things. The first thing is my closed position. I'm very aware of the fact that I am on Jonathan's right side and there is no way that I am crossing that. If we demonstrate the first position, the entry position, I'll show you how easy it is to ignore that position. Here's our preparation and here's our first position. You can see I'm still very much in that quadrant there. I definitely don't want to be anticipating where the throwaway is going. I just want to compliment him here. Now, as we start rotating and turning into that position, you can see that I'm maintaining where that line is. Now, same thing as we exit, I'm simply following that rotation. It's very much about timing um, and timing my body speed with the man's body speed and us really agreeing what, how much time we want to take when doing those actions. 
yeah, there's definitely some crossover between what Tullis has just mentioned and some of the things that we've discussed in previous videos. So I think the very first thing that struck my mind was the promenade video that we did two weeks ago, yeah. I think it was two weeks ago, about the ladies, be the ladies head being in the correct quadrant um, and not coming forwards and to the right. And I think that's very, very similar in promenade position and as you enter throwaway position, uh, sorry, the throwaway figure. Um, but then the other crossover between this figure, what Tilsa just mentioned, and another video that we made was making sure that Talissa and I, or you and your partner, time your rotation and your sway together and that you do the same amount of it. Absolutely. Yeah. So that from our first shape, if I choose, maybe there's a couple in the way or something like this, if I choose to spend more time in this position and rotate slower into the second shape, then Talissa has to match that timing and that quantity. If she just does the same amount every single time, regardless of what I do, we'll have to, we'll, there's going to be a lot of fighting because we're, neither of us are going to be very happy. So same timing and same quantity, very, very important. Like in every step, in every dance of our ballroom dances, it's easiest if you have a template laid out for how you would ultimately like it to um, be executed um, in terms of timing, in terms of all of the, the dimensions that Jonathan's just mentioned. But ultimately, um, there are so many variables in a competition setting, even in a social dance setting. Um, you may enter and want to do your throwaway in the middle of the room, um, but if there are couples in the way, the lady needs to be very responsive to timing and amounts of rotation. So that's where that comes in. Yeah, the other thing, the other thing to note as well is that that last shape that we executed for you just now, that we demonstrated, we chose to just do like a check position, but normally you might more commonly see a promenade position exit or maybe an oversway. Um, so there are many different exits. Make sure that you know which one you are doing uh, so that you can maximize that shape as well. Should we demonstrate one more and maybe exit with a promenade so that they can see what that's like? There you go. Okay, uh, just one more point before we finish up. This is just a bit of housekeeping. Um, make sure that you also are maintaining and thinking about your personal posture and your arm position because those are really the fundamental uh, qualities that we must be having all, uh, at all times. In every step, really. Yeah, so making sure that your arms aren't moving out of position or moving uh, separate from your body. Especially in a step like this where there's a lot of rotation and also a lot of focus on what the legs look like. We can't forget about that upper body. I'm very aware and we've practiced it many many times of that parallel position of our shoulders and elbows and I don't want to overextend or bring my arm behind me especially when we go into that that drop line position. Mm -hmm. So I think I think we've discussed uh, what we feel are the most important uh, things to consider when trying to perform a beautiful throw over this way. Um, of course, there are more things to consider. There's always more, more aspects and perspectives to, to look at, but these ones are very important. Uh, it just really depends where you are in your learning at the moment. So they may not be as relevant for you right now, but they might be more relevant to you in six months' time or a few time. So yeah, I think we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing your throwaway oversway. It is an exceptional, beautiful step when done correctly. Um, and you can give it your own personal touch in the way that you feel it while maintaining those, those rules and those positions. Have fun with it. We will see you in the next one. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed these videos and would like to see more.